of labor activities in Nigeria, it was simply because of contradictory policies of governments upon governments in the past. If government A come with policy A, another government might come and introduce B. And the question is, the labor has ne never sat down to create a think tank to say, why did government A did this and B is doing this? You should be seen to have a liaison body you should be seen to now be working with government. You should be seen to have expanded, even if it is Pharaoh that was in power. It's your right. The fact that they are called military government is different. But I tell you that it's a game. Labor against government, government against labor is a literature. The way budget is prepared so that they take your resources. The way policies are created and given to those in power to just do it blindly so that they can support them. I give you two examples, and the past speaker, please take note of this. You served in Babangida's government. When there is a military government in place, it is cool that brought them to power. What you may not know is that there are international communities involved. There are Nigerians involved contractors and civilians involved. There are some notable civil servants involved. When the government is formed, the government is not independent. Concept or policies are sold, and the government is told to carry them out as part of agreements. When labor doesn't like it, you go on strike. But there are questions you didn't ask. There is so much energy you dissipated and you shouldn't have. What you would have done was negotiation rather than confrontation. The labor would have been richer. That was the psychological aspect of it. Because unless there is friction, unless there is gap between a government and the people, those in power will sit comfortably. But the more they, send, they create stories and friction is raised out of nothing, Government will not be on her feet. Bodies like labor will, be, will not be on their feet. But the more the friction, the better. And it is when you are fighting that you lose your resources. And I'll give you an example. In 1995, the need to look for resources to run African states became an issue. Nigeria was more or less totally bankrupt. The need to run Nigeria became an issue. Salary payment was difficult. Then Libyan government, along with Germany, decided to utilize a satellite from a private satellite company that has shares of government of Germany in it. They discovered uranium in abundance and in high quality, well spread in Niger. Out of curiosity, that leader and other leaders decided to say, scratch part of Nigeria and let's take a look. They were shocked with what they discovered. In Northeast, they discovered a portion. And that portion, in part of Zambiza, leading to Lake Chad. What was deposited there, I'm not, this is not hearsay. I was in Libya, I was in attendance, along with Nigeria's ambassador, two of us allowed, then he was later told to go, and I was left alone, along with the Libyan leader and the German company and the owners of the satellite. What was kept there was capable of producing 10 Dubais, 1996, you can quote me in the eyes of this world, Mustafa said so. I'm not into rhetorics. I love this country, I stand for this country. We are already targeted and hated by numerous forces. But if that is what they should do for us rendering service to Nigeria, then definitely they have not started. What we discovered at that material time was a shocker. So I asked questions, as if I didn't understand what they were saying. The Libyan leader then, Menso rest in peace, said, and I quote, I mean, what is in this place is enough for you to produce 10 Dubais, 1996. 
The product of this satellite was brought to Nigerian head of state by me. I brought the two metallic boxes. Where is it? Who took it? What happened? Where is the money? Now, now hold on. What might interest you is what I'm going to say. Nigeria is poor. Your industries are dead. But hear this. 1999, November 1st, I was in prison. They came to meet me in prison. And they asked me numerous questions on the way we were managing some certain things about Nigeria. I wouldn't want to mention. They mentioned some names and commanders they required to do some certain jobs for them. But the question I asked is, was it for Nigeria? At the end of the day, to cut the story short, is to tell you that Boko Haram was a calculated game. No, I, I, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. See, see, I want us to listen with patriotism as Nigerians. Because when hopelessness confronts a person who is thirsty, unknown to him, he is standing on an oasis. He is dying of thirsty. He is looking for water and busy praying. But the senses to take the water and never come back alive is the problem of Nigeria. You are rich, you have it, you are scavenging for it. Most unfortunately. Now, from that time till now, it's 23 years. People might not tell you this, I'm telling you. I'm ready to be accused, abused, it doesn't matter. I am here. Precious stone has been what they have been taken. Boko Haram were our sons and daughters given a wrong indoctrination. Taking, taking opium from Afghanistan, the hashes in the world, mixing same wood, a certain chemical. When they dip a date in it, and then after four hours, whosoever takes it becomes a robot. You are totally robotic. You will respond to orders. You will not feel pain. You will not think. You will not reason. They kill numerous soldiers. Many widows in barracks. Many orphans littered all over. Many uh, 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 refugees scattered around Nigeria. Is labor aware? Keep that aside the social ills created for Nigeria and Nigerians. What you may ask yourself is, how much of this real stone have they taken in 23 years? What has it contributed to Nigeria's growth? Did they build one single textile with the money? Who are the Nigerians colliding with their external factors? When did it start and how many jobs work with them? Can you even quantify the number of officers, soldiers killed, traditional rulers? Can you quantify the friction created between Muslims and Christians? When a bomb is lost and is lodged in the church, they will quickly write in the paper the next day, it was mosque A that did it, and vice versa. They bombed the mosque and blame the church. It's not true. It's a game. So that when you fight yourself, when confusion keeps you aside, they are busy taking what you have. But you sit down. You see, you sit down and look at newspapers and you believe in it. No, there are numerous respected journalists who are highly patriotic, who are highly respected. There are many of them I can fight for with my blood. But they are poor, they are professionals, they don't have money. They have to write what they are told to write. They need job. Who is fighting for them? Keep that aside. Um, my brother. Anyway, I, I, I will I will run it out.
listen to this. Since since Boko Haram started, at one point in time you had satellite, but there was a story that your satellite disappeared because if the satellite were to be around, it would have given locations to your security. They would have seen and known and identified and arrested numerous participants that are taking your precious stones. And some notable names in Nigeria would have been mentioned. Suddenly there was a story, your satellite disappeared. The most disheartening story that only kindergarten children can accept. I tell you with all sense of humility, we investigated that, not in Nigeria. We went to numerous countries to know the game being played against Nigeria. At our own cost, taking risks to do so. What we have discovered is a shame, monumental shame, before man and before our creator. In the time to come, you will understand, because we'll address Nigeria, and it doesn't matter whose toes we stepped on, we will uneducate Nigeria. <laughs> now, 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 most of you here have your telephones in your hands. Listen, listen carefully. Labor is poor, agreed. Nigeria is poor, agreed. Most of you have telephones here. Google as I talk. How much is a kilogram of rhodium in the international market today? Kaduna, where you have most of your industries then, the best for the pride of all, were in Kaduna yesterday. But how much rhodium do you have in Kaduna? And how much is it per kilogram? Meaning a container is enough. Anyway, I have two minutes to go, but a container, a kilogram, hold on, a kilogram of it in world market today is either 440 something thousand per small kilogram. They are taking it in containers, in hundreds of containers. They find their way to the ports. They go into the international market. That is to say, if labor can agree with the federal government, take 10 containers, you will be the richest rich, you will have your industries, you will have your market, you will have your dreams attained, your children will have all it takes, you will live well. The question is, why are we not making sense with who we are and what we have? That's what I'm talking about. Since I have a short time, my concern is security of the product.